Let's give it a couple more seconds before we uh, kick off today. Um, and I'll sort of cover off what we're going to talk about today uh, as uh, just before we jump in. So we're going to be looking at uh, one of the most important parts of running a rental, uh, a profitable rental portfolio, and that is setting the right rent. And there is a fine balance that investors need to find uh, when deciding their rental rates. So, you know, if you set the rent too high, you'll struggle to fill the property, set the rent too low, and you're, you know, you're going to leave money on the table. So let's start by exploring how you can make an initial or initial assessment of the property's rent potential. So this could be uh, for a new property you've just purchased, uh, one that's just undergone renovations, or simply uh, a reassessment at the end of a fixed term lease. So Jonas, I'd love for you to explain maybe a few of the ways that landlords can do a quick, just initial assessment, and what are some of the factors um, that will affect how much rent they can charge, um, particularly on their property and you know this climate today. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's such a great topic, Logan, because it, it's obviously the biggest driver of the revenue. It is the revenue for every rental property in the country, in the world. Um, but it is also such an unknown number, and it's so hard to pick that right number. Um, there are some mechanisms and some strategies that we'll talk about today that can help make it easier and kind of give you a system for doing that. Um, these are things that I've seen observed with, you know, hundreds of landlords that I've talked to over the past few years and my own experience as a landlord myself, both individually and at scale. Um, you know, but I think at the core, uh, the, the most important thing for the, the landlord to know is that you don't get to control the rent, unfortunately. It would be wonderful if all of these stereotypes of, you know, landlords were true and we could just set the rent at whatever we wanted and renters would have to pay it. Um, I'm sure that would be great for a lot of landlords, but that's not the world we live in. Um, we are price takers uh, as landlords. And so um, the most important thing that you have to know is what is the market rent? And I often think of uh, apartments or rental homes as each one is like the world's smallest commodity market um, because renters are so unbelievably smart about what the rent is because they will go out and look at, they'll use a tool like Dwellsy and look at hundreds or thousands of rentals. So by the time they get to your place, they know intuitively whether you've overpriced or underpriced it. And I'm sure we've all seen that where, you know, you charge $2,500 for it and you get zero traffic. You charge $2,400 and all of a sudden the floodgates open and you get a ton of renters inquiring. Um, you know, so I think the real question is how do you know where to start and what's your strategy for finding that right price from that starting point? Yeah, it's super interesting. Um, and there's a few sort of factors here that we've included. So, you know, the 1% rule, um, you know, utilizing market reports, we'll sort of cover that a little bit later, uh, particularly yeah. Dwellsy's uh, market comp report. Uh, and sort of just, uh, you know, assessing location and things. But uh, as we jump into that, you'll sort of learn a little bit more there. So sort yeah, of getting, getting this initial estimate is sort of certainly a useful first step. So, but, but it's sort of like not, not the final step. So you can't really stop there. You sort of, it, you get the ballpark figure, but now to get the yeah. perfect rent amount, you need to do a little bit more digging. So this means, you know, running a market comparison report against comparable rental properties. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So I'd love to hear yeah, a little bit more about, I guess, uh, what a comparable property is and I guess what features and amenities to look for in this context. Yeah, you know, the so comparable property is a property that is like yours that is available for rent. And you know, what does it mean to be like yours? There's a lot of folks in the industry who have a very uh, distinct perspective on what makes a good comp or comparable uh, versus what makes a bad one. Uh, and, it, and there is a lot of judgment, a lot of art, if you will, in, in trying to figure that out, because as we all know, um, you can be in one block and get dramatically different rents for the same property than you would if it were a block away in a different direction. Um, and so you have to be really specific. And, and you know, one of the things that's incredibly important is we have to be honest with ourselves. Um, about what is a true comp. It's easy to look over the other side of an invisible line and say, well, my property is kind of like that one without being willing to admit to ourselves that, oh, that one's in the school district that's a 10 out of 10 and mine's in the school district that's a one out of 10. So that's going to impact my uh, ability to charge more rent for it. Or, you know, my, my street happens to be a little more dangerous than that street for whatever reason. As we all know, again, safety can be wildly different from one block to the next. 
Um, so, you know, it starts with being honest about what is actually like your property. And then you really want to get into the details from that and put yourself in the renter's shoes. You know, if the renter is um, coming from public transit to your property, what's the walk like? What's the distance versus this comp that you're looking at? Um, if they want walkability to uh, nearby stores and restaurants, what's, um, what's the distance? What can they walk to? Can they walk to similar quality stuff or is it different? Um, what's the size really? Um, you know, of your place and, and how does it compare to the other place um, in terms of actual usable space, not just square footage, but um, is it laid out in a way that makes sense, that makes it fully usable? I've seen, you know, three bedrooms that are smaller than one bedroom apartments, um, you know, and that three bedroom is just going to be a lot more usable for a broader cohort of folks than that big one bedroom, even though you might find the right market for that and get lucky. Um, and then fit and finish, um, you know, fit and finish is really important, but it's also you got to know your market. I remember putting in a brand new, beautiful kitchen into one of my apartments and I was hoping for $200 of rent uh, and I got 75 because I didn't evaluate the fact that there really was no market for upscale kitchens in the neighborhood that I had that rental unit. All of the kitchens were fairly modest and that was what the market demanded in that neighborhood. So I couldn't get the premium for that upscale kitchen that I'd hoped for. Um, so you really have to be, um, you know, first and foremost, just honest with yourself about uh, all of those different characteristics um, and evaluate them and really put yourself in the renter's shoes and think through their decision process through that whole thing and then get a trusted source of comps. That's been one of the biggest challenges. I remember back in the day, um, I used to have to go on Craigslist and it's, I found this mashup tool that somebody had taken old Craigslist listings and posted them on a map and it was always really kludgy. It was incredibly hard to use, um, but at least it gave me some sense of history of rental prices uh, in a visual way. Um, and that that hadn't existed um, at that point anywhere else. And then, you know, even still the data was really suspect. And, and still today, um, there's a lot of challenges. You know, we estimate up to 85% of the rental listings out there in the market that you might see are either fraudulent or what I call ghost listings. Wow. Um, yeah. Where, you know, the the you know, it, we all know, you know, a lot of the listings that are out there are not uh, showing what's actually available. Their goal yeah. is to bring the renter in the door, either for the broker or for the property manager um, to be able to, um, you know, have a chance to rent something to that renter. And so you really need to be suspect of what you're looking at uh, and make sure that you're looking at real comps. Um, and then again, you know, when you're looking at those and evaluating what is an actually available rental, um, what are they doing with the prices within that construct? Are they giving you closed rents, which can be very quirky because they take a lot of other considerations in there. What you really want is like the, the final asking rent for a place. Um, that's the, that's the best quality data point. It's a structured data point. That's typically the, the 10 day, 12 month rent, which is to say if somebody were to rent something, uh, and close a, um, a lease, uh, 10 days from now, you know, start their lease 10 days from now, um, and they were to sign a 12 month lease, you know, so that gives you a, um, a good framework for what the, the normal rent rate is rather than the renter who walks in and says, I want a three year lease, or I've got, you know, three enormous St. Bernard's and, you know, landlord looks at one of those situations and the other one and says, Oh God, what am I going to do here? Uh, I got to go in different directions with the rent because of the craziness here. Uh, and you might end up with a wild deviation from the actual rent. So you just have to be really careful about what rent data you're using um, mm. with those comps. And then honest with yourself about which comps are truly comps. But the, the comp is the core of figuring out um, what the rent price should be, because ultimately that's going to tell you what the market rate is for your apartment. Yeah, super interesting about the um, fraudulent listings, because we see that uh, a lot uh, now they're just everywhere and it's becoming more and more prevalent i think so um as a as a renter but also as a landlord just being aware of those fraudulent listings is just very important um from our perspective and and using the right tools to be able to know exactly which ones are are and and are not so yeah it's quite interesting there yeah yeah so yeah, no fraud is so pervasive out there it's gotten really scary you know it's <laughs> like facebook marketplace or or Craigslist, like oh, the majority they're, they're of the worst are, 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 are <laughs> yeah. you know, I, you know, last time I looked at, um, we did an analysis of Craigslist a couple of years ago and, um, we were seeing north of 90% of the listings on there were fraudulent. 
So wow. it's just, you got to be so careful out there. Uh, there you go. So many, so many fraudsters trying to steal from mainly renters, but landlords as well, trying to yeah. steal from both sides. So there you go, everyone in the audience, uh, bear that in mind. Um, <laughs> perhaps maybe not uh, list on Craigslist because as tenants yeah. get scammed, they become a lot more, uh, you know, diligent, hopefully, uh, with, you know, the types of properties that look, they're looking at as well. So um, I guess another question is, how does someone go out and find these properties to make a comparison? Um, yeah. Yeah. What's that process sort of look like? Yeah, well, I have a pretty strong bias here. So with, with my apologies, the, the, the bias towards Dwellsley. So we've we've aggregated the largest inventory of listings in the country. Um, we've got over 15 million properties that list with us, a really broad range of, um, you know, everything from your huge 300 unit market, you know, 300 unit communities all the way down to um, individual uh, SFR properties and, and small scale multifamily or, you know, two to six unit buildings and, and everything in between. Um, so we've got an incredibly broad and deep um, inventory uh, of listings. We're maniacal about data quality because uh, we really started the platform with data quality in mind. Um, and we're also uh, a little bit maniacal about keeping fraud off the platform. We actually offer a warranty to renters. We're the only platform in the, con in the country to do that, um, where we will warranty that if a renter gets defrauded on our platform, um, we'll reimburse them uh, up to $2,000 for that fraud. Um, and we've never had a loss yet, knock on wood, that that continues to be the case. But um, that is, uh, you know, hopefully we're, we're really good about keeping all the fraud off. We work every day to get better at it. Um, so we have an incredible inventory of comps um, through our platform. And um, right now we're offering um, access to comp reports through our site. Um, there's discounts available for folks from Landlord Studio. Um, and, you know, we think that's a great starting point. Um, but obviously, we're not the only choice out there. There's lots of other places you can look. It's um, helpful to look at whatever your preferred listing site is. Um, if you're used to and comfortable with using um, one, you know, some of the other uh, great platforms out there like apartments.com or, or Zillow or uh, rent.com, um, you know, can all be great options. Just be careful because there's a lot of ghost listings on those platforms. Again, the incentive for them is to bring the renter in, not to show the available listings as they are. Uh, so just know that when you're looking at something, it might be a ghost listing, it might be a real listing. You kind of need to call that landlord to find out if it's actually available uh, mm -hmm. to find out if not. And the other challenge with looking at live listings is you can't see the history of what was actually closed. Um, the way that most live listing platforms work um, is that landlords will tend to start high, um, as we all should, as we talk about pricing. Um, so you don't know where they are in that journey. Are they at the very beginning of offering that rental? And they've started 20% of where they th above where they think the market might be because they're willing to take a little bit of vacancy risk and take a little extra time to get that place rented. Or is it at the you know very end of the offering period um, and they're showing the um, the you know the, the close to real pricing? Uh, it's hard to tell on live listings. You generally want to look at uh, concluded listings uh, as much as possible versus live listings. Just want to sort of continue on. So manually doing these market comparisons, you know, used to be the only way. So you jump on Craigslist, you'd find a whole lot of different uh, properties that sort of look similar to yours. Uh, and then you would try to determine whether, you know, your rent price based on, you know, this very manual process. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure as you've all discovered, that's pretty a tedious sort of process. And Thankfully, there are a few online tools that can be massively helpful in this. Um, obviously, uh, Jonas mentioned a few, uh, Zillow, um, Rentometer, but also obviously Dwellsy as well. Um, mm -hmm. And so what that means is, um, you know, allows you to really speed up the automation of that whole process, uh, systemize the way that you can uh, always stay up to date with uh, rent prices for uh, your area and and really help you determine help you determine the right rent price for your property so we've obviously mentioned dwellsy iq a little bit um so i'd love to yeah hear a little bit more about this product uh jonas um and i guess how it's different from some of the other products in the marketplace as well like zillow and uh, etc so yeah. um yeah let us know a little bit of, about this yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we started building Dwellsy about five years ago. Uh, I was an operator at the time. Um, I was running about 60,000 apartments for one of the big REITs. 
Um, and we had a whole data science team. We had, you know, every resource you could possibly imagine to uh, try to be really good at pricing. But the, the core problem that we came back to over and over again was we couldn't get good comps. They just didn't exist out in the market. We couldn't get good quality data as an input. And over the course of a couple of years of working on this problem, uh, I identified exactly the type of data that we wanted to work with. Um, and this was these, you know, the marketing fee data. We needed to be able to see um, the final asking price um, for each place. That was where we could work with it at a high degree of granularity. Um, it was very uh, timely. Um, so you can get rapidly updated information. Um, and then uh, also it's a broad range, it gives you a very broad range of offerings, which is necessary because there's so many unique characteristics to rentals and to try to find that price for that commodity of one, um, you really need to be able to look at a lot of different options to, to get close to what the right price is. And that data set just didn't exist. So we built Dwellsy from the ground up really to be able to provide this data set, built a consumer marketplace where renters can come and find their next rental, landlords can get their place rented. Um, and then uh, using that data, we're now able to support the whole industry. So we're building out products um, to help everybody involved in the business be able to understand what market rent is and, and get access to the comp. So we're a first of its kind platform built from the ground up to provide this kind of service. Uh, we have dramatically more data than anybody has ever had, and it, the data itself is much higher quality than anything else available in the market. Um, so from an effective Super interesting. And if anyone wants to get a copy of that report, if you're in the process of doing... From the source, and it's better all the way through. This is real facts. We're not pointing at what the facts might be. If anyone uh, wants to get a copy of this report, uh, then yeah, f feel free to head over to landlordstudio.com slash dwellsy. Uh, if you are in the process of doing uh, a comp at the moment, trying to figure out the correct rent for your property, this is a great way to do it. And uh, you'll get 20% off that as well uh, from that link there. So head over there, landlordstudio.com slash dwellsy, and we'll include a link to that in uh, the follow-up email and on uh, the replay as well. So I guess just sort of, you know, expanding on this a little bit more. So setting rent is, you know, obviously not a one-time thing. Um, your rent rate should constantly be under assessment. Uh, and if it's taking a really t long time to fill the property, uh, as you were sort of mentioning just before, so for example, uh, it could be a, you know, a sign that you've priced your property a little bit too high and you need to go back to the drawing board. Um, End of the lease, you, you know, you should be taking the opportunity to review how the market has changed and adjust because it does fluctuate uh, throughout the year mm -hmm. and across the years. So Jonas, um, maybe go into a little bit more detail uh, as to why adjusting the rent every year is, just, is, is really important. And um, yeah. I guess things to look for if, if landlords have experienced that um, that whole situation where, you know, they're not getting any inquiries about their property. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, moving the rent sucks, right? The, the renters don't want to see the rent move. Um, it's a lot of uh, thinking and, and uh, a lot of work to figure out what that right price is. Um, so it's very tempting, uh, particularly if you have a great tenant in the place right now, just to leave the rent as it is. Um, but you should move the rent every year. And I say very intentionally move the rent every year because it's not necessarily a rent raise, you should be willing to move the rent according to what's happening with the market. Um, and that's necessary for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, you want the renter to be conditioned to um, the rent changes every year. Um, and th the reason that's important is because they start to build their expectations set around that. And you know, anger and frustration and disappointment comes when expectation is not met. So if you set the expectation that the rent's going to move every year and then it does, then it's much easier to have those conversations each year. Um, the second thing is it's really tempting just to leave the rent as is when you've got a great tenant, as I mentioned. Um, but then you end up in this problem that we so often see, you know, I call it, you know, front page risk or headline risk, where you're that terrible landlord that moved somebody's rent by 30% um, because you realize, oh, I want to sell the property. I've had this great tenant in here. I've left the rent as is. Um, you know, the rent should be $2,000, but instead it's 1400. I got to move the rent on that person. They go to their local newspaper. You're having a very bad day. Um, you don't, you never want to be in that situation. Um, and, uh, you know, review, reviewing it and, and being, uh, you know, 
as close to market rent as possible each year uh, keeps you away from that issue. Um, and then, you know, to, to overall to achieve a maximum rent rate, as, as the slide says, um, there's really a strategy here that's pretty straightforward. Um, you basically want to do the work up front, as we've been talking about, do the comp work to understand what you think the market rate is, um, and then start a little high. Uh, depending on your tolerance and how much time you have, uh, tolerance for vacancy, and how much time you have before the, the unit is um, going to be truly available. Um, if you can put it out there for rent before um, you have your current renter move out, in some parts of the country that's a standard practice, other parts that's not, um, you really want to start a little high. So if you think, for example, it's a $2,000 rental, maybe you start at $2,100 or $2,200, and you can use your traffic as your gauge of whether you've hit the market rent. And there is an inflection point where all of a sudden you go from having very few inquiries to a lot of inquiries. And so starting a little bit higher and dropping it by increments, depending on how much time you have, if you've got six weeks before vacancy and you've got it listed, that's fantastic. You know, you can, you can test each price out for a week and still have plenty of room to move. Um, if you've got less time, then, you know, move, move the rental listing in, in smaller increments, but, um, you know, start off at 2200, drop it to 2100, drop it to 2050, um, and see when that, um, when that volume really picks up. And, and when it does, you've found the market rate, uh, and within that, um, area, and you never know by starting out high, you might find that renter for whom it's the perfect place. They've been looking for something exactly like that. Um, and your place comes along and they're willing to pay a premium because it's worth a little bit more for them. So you give yourself that shot at, a, at above market rent um, and you, um, you know, find that market rent in a pretty efficient way by taking that kind of strategy. Let's continue on from where we, in, uh, where we left off. Uh, and I guess just sort of going on further from uh, raising the rent or uh, looking at the rent every year. Uh, and, and I guess some of the reasons why this is important but when it comes to the sort of legal context of this you know some states you can't raise rent a uh, certain amount uh, some you know places it, there's there's sort of um, you know restrictions around this so I guess a word of caution when implementing a rent raise is you need to remain sort of compliant uh, with legal requirements and you know this means giving the tenant the required notice uh, of the rent increase in writing uh, also means uh, avoiding large sudden rent increases. So don't get too excited, you know, if the, you know, the, the rent in your area is increasing all of a sudden and you're seeing that you are undercharging, um, you know, because in some states you can't simply just raise the rent um, at the end of uh, uh, the lease or in the lease itself, for instance. So, and of course, we're talking about the sort of rent control laws, which limit, you know, how much you can raise it by. So for example, in California, Landlords can't raise the rent by more than you know ten percent total or five percent plus uh, the percentage change in cost of living you know whichever is lower over that twelve month period. So uh, it means just being a little bit more diligent about staying up to date with local laws as well. So don't take advice from us. We're not giving uh, legal advice here. Please seek uh, your uh, legal advisor around this. But there is uh, uh, some important stuff to note here. So I guess. Um, in the context of that, uh, Jonas, maybe tell us a little bit more about raising rent on existing tenants, for instance, and, mm -hmm. and what landlords need to know to stay compliant and avoid sort of losing the great tenants that they already have. Yeah, yeah. No, and again, Logan, I think you're, um, you're absolutely right to um, think about the local um, construct, the legal construct, and it makes it that much more important to move the rent every year because once you do fall behind, um, it makes it very difficult to catch back up to market rent if you're in a, in, a, in a market where that's the case. So it can seem easy just to skip the rent raise this year or the rent um, change of, of one type or another. Um, but again, you're going you're gonna to pay for that later if you go and, and do that. So you really want to uh, make the change every year. Um, and when you do in terms of communicating with the renter, um, you know, I've always uh, followed a policy of just transparency, advance notice. Um, and I've also led with providing them with comps. Um, so, you know, one of my favorite things to do is to tell them, hey, market rent is up 4% in our area. Here are a few places like yours um, that you can give a sense of, um, you know, what's happening with the market uh, and allow them 
to see some of the data that you're looking at to make your decision and then say, you know, I'm moving the rent up by 4%. And that means an extra, you know, whatever it is, 40 bucks or 80 bucks or whatever it might be um, for that individual renter, let them know um, when it'll take effect. Um, and if they have any questions, um, then, you know, that's a conversation that you can have with them about that. Um, but providing them with a fair degree of transparency and, and some visibility into the work that you've done um, gives them an understanding that it's not arbitrary. This is what's actually happening in their marketplace, um, making sure that it's uh, the rent increase, if it's an increase, is compliant with um, whatever local laws there are. Um, and then, you know, just being really upfront and, and good about communication so they can make the right decision for themselves within that context uh, goes a long way. Hmm. Yeah, and I think that's super key and um, really important to consider. So using the sort of tools, um, dwells the IQ report comp to get sort of your understanding of the overall uh, rent comparison in your area. And then obviously um, chatting with a legal advisor, uh, making sure that you're not breaking any laws, the combination of those two sort of processes are going to really help uh, you stay competitive in the marketplace as well. Um, and uh, yeah, achieve maximum sort of ROI on uh, your rent rate. So I guess, yeah, getting the most out of your rentals isn't really just about understanding the market. You know, it's, it's about uh, all these different processes, but it's also about, you know, providing tenants with features and amenities they want and making sure they have a good experience um, and a happy tenant is less likely to move on after all. So yeah. I guess bearing all these things in mind and making sure that you are staying competitive, but also um, you know a great experience for the tenant is is, is key as well. So um, yeah, and that, this sort of brings us to the last section of the webinar, and it's all about how you can leverage software like Landlord Studio to improve those processes and maximize the rental profitability uh, uh, in the context of you know setting rent bringing on tenants, um, you know, keeping a happy experience for them overall, uh, and really just making sure that you are a, a competitive uh, player when it comes to uh, your rental business overall. So in Landlord Studio, you know, this, has helped, this product is designed to help you maximize your ROI. So this is providing end-to-end -end tools for finding and managing those tenants. So we have a whole listings product uh, we uh, will be syndicating out to Dwellsy as well. So you will see uh, listings on Dwellsy's website from our own landlords uh, who are verified, et cetera. And that all just adds to the data of the comp reports as well. So you can actually uh, see uh, exactly what's going on, but you can also list the properties uh, on those, uh, those syndication partners like Dwellsy, et cetera, to find great tenants uh, and, and then screen them through our process as well. Um, so having the right tools is going to really help you just maximize all the processes uh, and systemize everything uh, and improve you know, tenant retention as well, particularly when you find those tenants and then onboard them uh, with a streamlined sort of process as well. So how it sort of helps you uh, in a step-by-step -step process. So the first one is obviously creating that rental listing, syndicating it across the top, top sites. Um, and maximizing the exposure. So once you've sort of got an understanding of how much you can charge, uh, you've done your rental comp report through Dwellsy, you've figured out, um, you know, this is how much I'm gonna charge for my rental property. You can now syndicate it, create a listing with one click, single click, and then get exposure across all the different platforms uh, to get sort of higher intent leads faster. Uh, and it actually helps you sort of test uh, the price as well. So if you if you're finding you're not getting leads uh, from a specific price, then you can adjust that price and simply click publish, and it will update your listing across all the sites. Uh, so you can actually start to test exactly where that uh, friction point is, or where that um, that drop off is in terms of rent price, uh, in a much more easier way than just sort of going out and listing your property manually on all these different sites. Uh, you can get a wider exposure across all the platforms mm -hmm. and then sort of leveraging our tenant screening tools to conduct background checks, um, assess the credit worthiness, verify sort of rental histories as well. So this is really once you've found your tenant um, and 
that lead you know leads have come into landlord studio you've run uh, some pre-screening which is all automated as well and you've uh, you know made a decision on a particular tenant that you're happy with uh, you can now start to leverage some of the tenant screening checks uh, to get that sort of formality um, done through the platform as well and that's all sort of built in as well so and then sort of working out the you know working out the right rent rate you know won't make a difference to how your tenants pay but if you're sort of enabling um, tenants to set up automatic online rent payments etc it's really just going to add to that experience a lot of tenants want to pay rent uh, online they're used to digital payment methods now as the world becomes more digital and so offering a solution like that where they don't have to get out cash every month or a check uh, and then receive that um, or send that off to you uh, is just going to make that whole experience better um, and lead to happier tenants in the long run less vacancy rates etc um, benefits with uh, online rent collection is you know you can set the rent amount uh, you can adjust it uh, as as needed um, payments are delivered directly to your bank account secure it's convenient uh, and there's automated rent reminders and things uh, around that to ensure the tenant knows exactly how much they're paying when they need to pay etc uh, but it also uh, tracks all the income uh, into our accounting features as well so you don't have to manually record that on spreadsheets uh, etc and then uh, another benefit sort of here is uh, tracking maintenance requests so now that tenants in the property they're paying you've got a happy tenant you've started the relationship great uh, now throughout the term of that lease you can track maintenance requests uh, schedule repairs etc uh, monitor the progress uh, of um, you know you know all the tasks in in the property so Basically doing all of these different types of things is really just going to improve the experience overall um, to really just help uh, you keep happy tenants and uh, avoid, um, you know, vacancies at the end of it. Because that's ultimately what you're trying to plan to do is not have that property vacant and keep those happy tenants. So, um, and then, you know, the final aspect of this whole thing is the accounting and digitizing all the records for tax time. So in you know, using a, a product like Dwellsy IQ to get your rental comp report so you, that you can set the right rents and then syndicating your listing out to a platform like Dwellsy as well is really just gonna maximize your chances of getting the, the right tenant, setting yourself up on the right foot um, for a, a leasing season. So if you are interested in learning more about this, and how it can help you jump onto landlordstudio.com, uh, create a free account. Uh, you can use Landlord Studio for free, up to three units. Uh, and then we have a whole lot of additional features there as well. So if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to just drop them into the chat before we sort of wrap up. Um, if you've got any questions about Dwellsy IQ or Dwellsy's platform, uh, Drop them in now. Uh, I see Annette's just asked a question about uh, Canadian uh, property managers. Does does Dwellsy IQ work in Canada, uh, Jonas, or is this US specific? Yeah, we are US specific today. I'm actually Canadian, so uh, I very much <laughs> want to expand to Canada, but we're not quite ready for that yet. Just the US for the time being. Any other questions before we sort of jump off? Just drop them into the chat. Um, and again, if you want to grab one of the as the IQ reports, uh, you can get 20% off that uh, if you are running a comparison on your property. So just jump on landlordstudio.com slash Dwellsy and you'll uh, be able to uh, use the code Landlord Studio 2024 uh, for 20% off. So let's uh, finalize and finish up. Um, and I just want to sort of recap on um, you know strategies to setting the right rent. Uh, and, and so this is the first and foremost is, you know, setting a competitive rent as uh, essential to attract the great tenants. Uh, and you should constantly be reassessing your rent uh, rate to keep it in line with market rates. Uh, and, you know, thankfully, you don't have to do this manually anymore. You don't have to jump on Craigslist and you don't have to jump on Zillow and all these other websites and compile a list of properties that are in your area uh, that may be ghost properties, as Jonas sort of uh, referred to before. 
um, there are products like Dwellsy IQ's report that are going to help you with this. So um, be sure to leverage those tools. We're, uh, you know, in an age of digital tools that are going to really help you systemize and maximize uh, all the efficiencies in your business. So, and then finally, we explored uh, Landlord Studio and how that's going to help you sort of, uh, you know, set off on the right foot and actually make sure that you provide your tenants with a great uh, uh, tenant experience with all the different features that you know help them uh, pay their rent and raise maintenance requests as well so yeah want to express my gratitude to all, all the guests in the uh, audience today and uh, Jonas as well from Dwellsy for joining us and sharing his experience um, we will send out a replay to this uh, to this webinar so be sure to check that out um, and also, yeah, check out the Dwellsy IQ report as well. So, Jonas, uh, yeah, where can more people go to find out about you or your business uh, or ask any sort of additional questions that they might have? Yeah, absolutely, Logan. So uh, we can be reached. Uh, the consumer marketplace is Dwellsy.com. DwellsyIQ.com is where you can find out more about the data. Um, and if anybody wants to shoot me a note, I'm at Jonas at Dwellsy.com. Happy to chat. Awesome. So I'll send out a link to some of those uh, those uh, key websites as well. So if you want to contact Jonas or his team, uh, you can do so there. But appreciate everyone joining uh, in today. Uh, thank you for uh, yeah joining the webinar. And uh, until next time, happy renting.